of our position. It can be very expensive. So mostly just looking for some cheaper ones that can help overall. <clears throat> this wouldn't be bad, the needle exchange program. It does take a lot of political capital to introduce because people are pretty, you know, sketch about it. But it makes the liberals happy, which is good because they're a big voter block, and helps with health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I see which, why you would think it might go the other way, Chili Con Carnage. Because you might think, like, they're striking for better working conditions, so if we improved worker laws, they would be happy about it. But that's the, that one there, that, that represents, yeah, a different style of laws. Uh... Better health would reduce hospital overcrowding, which would be very potent. And it is going down right now, which is good. Um, transport. Monorail. Uh... Wait. <gasps> Do they not have monorail anymore? No, just high-speed rail subsidies. I guess this would be the equivalent of our monorail from uh, previous versions of democracy. Obesity is definitely still being a thing. I'm wondering, actually... If we just increased um, a cycling campaign, maybe I'll just max this out. It only costs us one point. Let's do this right away. And it, it's all basically positive over here, right? Health goes up a tiny bit. Car usage goes down a little bit. Obesity goes down a little bit. Um, it's not a very, very dramatic change. But yeah, let's push the cycling campaign. Um, food labeling laws. I think I would like to stricken this up over here. Um... I think it's quite good. Like, why would you not want the absolute best, clearest labeling on food so people can make their own damn decisions about things? Capitalists don't like it because it means they can't hide sawdust in it as much. Uh, oh. Didn't it just start shrinking this graphic? Oh. Also, oh, that's new. That's kind of interesting and exciting. Um, one of the things I would like, and I don't know why this isn't a thing, why isn't there some just standard for slapping like a little vegetarian symbol on, on packaged food you buy at grocery stores? Most of the stuff you buy turns out to be vegetarian. You know, you pick up a can of soup, you have to sit there and read through 17 different ingredients that you can't pronounce to be like, yeah, okay, there's no beef stock in here. Great. Like, you know, slap a little V on there. What's wrong with you? You're shopping around in the UK. Most of the things do, but in North America, no. Very frustrating. All right, I'm going to run this. It seems pretty easy. That takes a lot of capital, but you know what? It's a one-time thing. That's going to be okay. What else could we mess with right now? Free school meals. Again, it's not that expensive to push. It it really helps to counter poverty. Really helps to counter poverty because it takes the stress off of uh, low-income families. Um, it actually does help to fight obesity because theoretically, you know, you're not you're not sending your kid to school with like a um, snackable or something like that, right? Hopefully, the, this is funding for good, healthy school meals, right? We're spending to make sure they get like actual real vegetables, for example, which seems like a fairly good idea. Um, I think we're gonna run this, and yeah, and it affects health, which is a big thing we're working toward. See, here's one of the differences when you've got a um, a centralized health system in a country. The country is very incentivized to try to um, prevent health problems before they, they crop up, right? Because you can sort of organize centrally like that, um, as opposed to being a little bit more treatment oriented because you've got a massive um, like healthcare and, and, and pharmaceutical kind of group of companies that are just looking to sort of profit off those things. They don't have the same sort of incentive to maybe get ahead of the problem. Um, and so hopefully we can use that over here. Um, food standards agency. We've got that maxed out, which is nice. We got a cycling campaign maxed out now too. the food labeling, junk food tax. 
Okay, we'll see how this continues to work over here. Um, pollution is still, like, stupid high. Part of it is because um, GDP, car usage. Reforestation. I wonder if there's anything else we can do. We did go and mess with this, and it will take a while for this some of this to kick in. How's our pollution? Oh, yeah, that was what I was just looking at. And then um, the environment overall. Environment's being hurt by GDP, car usage, air travel. Yeah. I mean, we could subsidize more rail and bus and things, which could be a thing. Hmm. Maybe it's just time for a plastic bag tax. Although, remember, most of our people consider themselves to be capitalists. We could do cyberbullying. Free parenting classes. Okay, it's cheap. Everyone's fairly happy. Social Justice Foundation is a pretty good idea. And, um, inc oh, increases membership in liberalism. Right now, we mostly want to make liberals happier. All right, let's go ahead with the cyberbullying campaign. We'll do this. So it makes the youths happier, the parents happier. Something we're going to want at some point just to improve electability. Because uh, our popularity is not fantastic right now. Um, yeah. Motorists are now the biggest group in our country. They're, they count, they're bigger than the liberals, as is. That's insane. I'm in advance here. Uh, we think the Doctor Strike might be improving a little. We'll see. <clears throat> Shit, Cyber Warfare kicked in. That's a that's really annoying. It's dropping the GDP substantially. I was hoping to stop this from showing up in the first place. I didn't really do that much to stop it though. Factory farming law. Campaign for the tightening of animal welfare standards on farms is gaining momentum. A law has been proposed that would set higher minimum standards for space, food, and access to outdoors that is available to animals in intensive farming establishments. We could set tougher standards. It's about time we did something to ensure animals are not suffering in intensive farming. Most people would be horrified if they saw the conditions some animals are kept in. These standards would lead to more expensive food, but people would be happy to pay more if they knew the conditions in which animals were currently kept. Or we can leave them unchanged. Nobody forces people to buy processed meat from the cheapest source. There are organic and free-range foods, but the market market shows clearly that people are prepared to pay more for a change in animal welfare. This is the government interfering in the market to appease a few campaigners. So, do we set laws to prevent, like, aggressive factory farming, or do we not in uh, get involved? Tougher, 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 unchanged, unchanged, tougher. Everyone mostly wants to save the aminals, which I like. Set tougher standards is done. So farmers don't like it. It's going to make their job harder to make as much profit. Capitalists don't like it, obviously, but they're not bothered that much. Environmentalists, liberals, brings down to GDP, increases plant-based diets because meat's going to be more expensive. People are going to fly, go over there. Uh, GDP has dropped, as expected. Uh, unemployment going up, that's not so great. Poverty going down, weirdly. But, yeah, all right. The, right here, cyber warfare. Boosting intelligence services might be the best way to deal with this. We can't we can't tweak foreign relations directly. There are some ways we can do it. You can see it dramatically drops cyber warfare quite quickly. The costs aren't too much. The liberals aren't happy with it though. We have a lot of liberals to deal with. A lot of liberals. Now, it also provides security against assassination attempts. The thing is, I'm not sure there's anything I can do to combat cyber warfare that's not going to upset liberals because it's all going to involve more tracking of the internet, right? Um, I mean, we could spend more on, on military, but that's not, you know, that's going to be very, very, very expensive and the liberals don't care that much about that either. If we got our foreign relations improved, then there would be fewer foreign agents willing to do it. But there's it, it, it takes a lot of work to do this. I think we have to increase our, um, our intelligence services. And the thing is, the cyber warfare goes up so fast when we go over here. Because there's different sort of, like, the... Uh, the formula for some different things go differently. Like you can see here, it goes up very slowly, kind of linearly, and then there's a bigger multiplier. I think we have to max it out. We might be able to bring it back down later, but I think right now we've got to go kind of crazy on this. 
hurts a little, but I think it's something we got to do. Uh, obesity, it is on a steady slide down, which is nice to see. Things are still kicking in over here. I think the obesity is going to go away in a few turns without us having to mess with it too, too much. Um, environmental protests, yeah, well, I mean, they're mostly going to be pissed because the environment is bad. Is this literally, like, minimum value? <laughs> is the environment... Is, how much environment do we have? No. <laughs> I don't know if police drones would help with cyber warfare. It doesn't really make much sense. No environment left. <sighs> yeah, we gotta convince people not to uh, use too many cars here. Let me take a quick gander through some of this. Do bicycle subsidies. Carpooling campaign. It's not very expensive. Lowers car usage. New congestion charges. That will upset motors a lot. And we Right now, there's still a big block. I don't know if we necessarily want to mess with that. Um, fuel efficiency standards are actually something that um, motorists like because it means they're going to have more fuel efficient cars. You respire, <laughs> require more Vespine environment. Can't protect the environment, there's none left. I think, um, well, let's, this increases car usage. Uh, let's do a carpooling campaign. I mean, no one can argue against the message of, hey, maybe you should have more than one person in the car. Let's start with that. It's relatively cheap. Takes a while to do it. Will help to bring down car usage a little bit. Um, but I kind of feel like... It increases car usage. Although, theoretically, will will help more overall. There are going to be more cars, but if there's more fuel-efficient cars, it might be a good idea. I don't think there's any reason not to just to max it out. Lowers oil demand. CO2 emissions go down a fair bit. CO2 emissions drop more than car usage goes up. And car usage is going to take a long time to really rise as a result of this. So it's definitely going to do more for the environment short term. Um, and that's a good thing. And then if we can get telecommuting and stuff, that would also be very nice. Um, I don't remember where telecommuting. I'm assuming we can't afford it right now. Oh, we can. Well, let's totally kick this in. And again, I think we're going to max this out. It doesn't upset anyone. It lowers the number of people who consider themselves to be commuters, and it reduces car usage substantially. It actually doesn't even take that long. Commuters are happy. Parents are happy. Trade unions are happy. The telecoms industry loves it because that's more people who are going to be paying for better internet. Um, so, I mean, there's pros and cons to having the strong telecoms industry. But boom. Yeah, working from home is awesome. I would know. All right, I'm going to go ahead and advance. Gig economy is imminent again. I suspect if we strengthen labor laws, gig economy would actually go down. If we eliminated payroll tax, it would probably go down as well because more people would be hiring. But mostly, I think, if we keep unemployment under control, gig economy won't kick in. Luckily, it doesn't have a big gap between these two. It's not one of these where once it, it comes into effect, it's really hard to get rid of. All right, we got a question about fracking, though. Frick fracking. <laughs> so hydraulic fracking, fracturing, better known as fracking, is a drilling technology that allows energy companies to exploit previously unreachable deposits of shale gas. The technique is relatively new and requires the government to give permission to use. On the one hand, it opens up potentially huge supplies of energy. On the other hand, there are serious environmental concerns about the process. We could either allow... This bill will give the go-ahead to the energy companies to carry out commercial-level fracking operations on our soil. This is great news for consumers as it will drive energy prices down and will reduce our dependence on foreign oil imports of oil and gas. Plus, it will be a boost for the economy. What's not to like? It needs a capital letter over there. Ban! Fracking poses a number of dangers, not least the possibility that it is linked to earthquakes and the very real danger of contaminating the water supplies that involves pumping huge amounts of dangerous chemicals into the rock at very high pressures. Plus, it's just another way to perpetuate a reliance on ever-dwindling supply of climate-damaging fossil fuels. Do we want to allow fracking or ban fracking? Chat seems really overwhelmingly uh, wanting to ban. Yeah, very much uh, they're pro-banning over here. Or anti-fracking. We're going to ban it. Environmentalists are going to love it. Capitalists ain't going to love it. This seems to be a, a pattern that we do over here. Uh, GDP is getting a little bit better, which is nice. Health is improving as well, which is good. How are we doing on some of these? Obesity continues to drop. Drops like a fat man falling off a 
thing that you fall off of. As a Doctor Strike situation, pretty much unchanged. Um, how about over here with the Cyber Warfare? I think it is going to go down. The Intelligence Services is taking six turns to implement over here. Um, it might be enough to solve it. We will see again at that point. We have a slight uh, surplus in our budget, which is nice to see. Um, yeah, not bad at all. Popularity is going up. That's good to see. Sort over here. Um, so motorists, well, either the number of motorists have gone down slightly or the number of liberals have gone up slightly. I think both is slightly true, actually. Oh, they've inverted these two. That's interesting. Because he used to be in the foreground. Now it's her with her uh, interesting choice of uh, a plant life on her uh, on her jumper. So they're obviously not going to be happy about my intelligence services things. But hopefully we can, you know, balance it out with a few other things. If we can. I'm wondering... Okay. Prisoner tagging. So the idea... I think alternative in incarceration allows people to reintegrate in the community upon release from prison while in law enforcement. So, like, will they really have, like, a big GPS tag? Kind of like an ankle monitor, I guess. It may be more what it is. Because liberals don't like this. It does bring down crime and violent crime. We could consider canceling something like this to appease the liberals. I mean, they got the camera, the armed police... I mean, oops, that's not the button I wanted to hit. Um, right over here. Um, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't mind a slightly more um, sort of like UK and most places in Europe where your your standard police aren't necessarily going around with guns strapped to them all the time. Um, because for the vast majority of interactions police have with the public, they don't need to be armed, is the idea. And then you have access to weapons if there's a violent situation that you have to access. I mean, we could bring this down. It saves a little bit of money. Not really, you know, not really the point uh, over here. But it would save us a little bit of money. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, max it out. Submachine guns for all the police. Uh, maybe I'll leave that for now. Maybe there's just policies we could roll. That would make the liberals more happy. Some new ones. Uh oh, this okay. You know what? It's time to do this for crying out loud. Boom! Imprisonment. Not allowed. Let's do this. So the liberals will be pleased instantly, which is nice. A gender equality will rise raise over time. The conservatives and the religious aren't too keen on it, but they are fairly small groups in our electorate, so it might be fine. Yeah, let's just let's just max this out. Jury trials. We do have jury trials. We might be able to increase that. It's a good point, because they do have it in the list, jury trials. Uh right here. Um, if requested. We could make it universals. Um, it's actually interesting. Okay, so. We're going from 150, so it's only an extra 50 million, which is effectively nothing given the size of our budget, uh, to boost this up. It makes liberals happier and reduces corruption. I don't think there's any reason not to do this. I would suspect in real life having jury trials for literally everything might just be impractical and too costly. Uh, I don't know, parents wouldn't like it or something like that, and self-employed people wouldn't like it because, you know, they're, they're, having, they're forced to go to do jury trials too often. That might be the interpretation there. So I wouldn't actually mind seeing if it was like, because right now it's a no-brainer, why wouldn't you just max this out every time? So I wouldn't mind actually seeing a slight negative to having a jury trial for all the things. But as it is, it seems like pretty good. You think people are annoyed at jury duty now? Exactly. Boom. Done. Done. Okay. Uh, we've got a few points left. I think I'll save it so that we might be able to make some bigger things. Um, and we're still mostly waiting for a lot of change to kick in on some stuff. Crime. Wow. Basically nothing. Amazing. Uh, unemployment going down slightly again, which is good because it was going up for a little bit. GDP is improving. Health is improving. International Literary Award. A local writer has won the most prestigious international literary award for her for their novel. The story is set in our country and has raised the nation's profile across the world. Tourism goes up. Nice. And some random uh, news headlines. What's this? Oh, about the car emission limit. Wrecking their once thriving business. Deal with it. We got a slight surplus. Staging protests. The Environmental Alliance. I'm trying! I'm trying! 
Oh. All right. Obesity continues to fall. Wonderful. I mean, we've still got a while, while to go, but it's going there. Uh, environmental protests actually went down a notch. Our changes to the environment. I think, you know, things are finally happening. Uncompetitive economy did drop a little at some point, but it's still far from going away, which is too bad. Uh, pollution took a huge drop down. Oh, this is when we boosted our reforestation efforts. Nice. Sort of flattening out again. Um, we, we are making some changes to car usage, which I think will hopefully move us in the right direction there. Uh, this guy here, he is not... How's your cabinet looking? Wow, he is not pleased. I think... Oh, we can fire him for free because he's so pissy, I think. Actually, quite a few people aren't that keen. I wonder if it's time for just a big cabinet reshuffle. We can leave these three in here. Um, I mean, 1.6 maybe not as good as we want, but they're all feeling very loyal. Whereas these, not so much. Okay, let's do a reshuffle. Let's fire these four. Groups are a little fuzzy, but we'll see what we can do here. I'll hire loyal people. I'm going to grab Damien here because of the campaigning. Or actually, what about Jules? Well, oh, they don't really like this category. Jules for public service. Yes. Call. Maybe I will just grab him. Okay. The cost is ten now, but I think it's going to be good. Plus, it there there can be like you know um, when the, if there's controversy because of people in cabinet doing things, it's an issue. Um, hospital overcrowding uh, went down, but then flatlined a little bit more. Healthcare demand is going down a little, which is nice. Right to die helped some of that. Um, overall, our health is improving, which is helping out on some of this. Um, tobacco usage. Wow. We can increase the tobacco tax. It does upset people, though, because there's a lot of smokers. And it does, you know, hurt poverty, lower equality. Let's do free eye tests, because I would like that to be a thing. Hybrid cars would be a good idea, too, but... I still want to take a crack at, like, so, helping with some of the health issues here. Which, hybrid cars would lower pollution, which would help with health as well. But let's run these eye tests. It's not very expensive. The The actual direct health benefit isn't much and does take a long time to fully implement. Um, but it helps to lower poverty, which is good, because then you end up with a more equal society, which reduces certain problems with crime and things like that. It's a pretty easy one for us to implement. Okay, we don't have a lot of points left over. I think I'm going to advance again. Oh, education took a little dip. Economic forecast. Oh, global economy is doing well. That's good. Merger. Okay. A large internet company has announced plans to buy one of its main competitors. This merger needs government approval, but if it goes ahead, it will create one of the biggest companies in the war in the country. We can allow the merger. There's no good reason to prevent this merger. In an increasingly global market, our companies need to grow if they are to compete successfully. The bigger company will be more efficient and effective in, hand in global marketplace. Or we can block the merger. The whole idea of a free market is based on competition. Allowing these two firms to merge will reduce both competition and consumer choice and no doubt lead to redundancies. It's another example of government looking after big business and forgetting the little guy. Small businesses and trade unions urge you to block this merger. 
There's actually something uh, fairly big with this um, in the mid, uh, the, the oddies, like just the 2000s, um, because I think two big Canadian banks wanted to merge, and the government um, decided to block it in the end. And this was just not long before the giant recession in 2008. Um, and Canada weathered a lot of it fairly well, and some people attributed it to um, preventing the banks from merging up, as well as a few other financial sort of uh, limits to, which would, like basically prevented them from going like YOLO on some, some of the crazy investments and stuff like that, which ended up going like shitty in 2008. Um, now, that's not what, what this is, but anyway, there's that. Chat is somewhat split. It looks like it looks like okay. Most people want to block, so we'll go ahead and block the merger. It's not. It wasn't like one side. It wasn't a landslide. Most people seem to want to do the block, so we'll go ahead and do that. So self-employed like it. Capitalists don't like it. Trade unionists do. Okay, and it could have implications on our GDP as well. All right, let's take a look through some of our things. Uh, environmental protests are going down, so we must be doing something right over there. Uncompetitive economy, sort of down, but not much. Pollution, okay, down and then take a little bit of a kick here. This is probably because our GDP went up a little bit, uh, which tends to lead to more pollution as just people are just buying and doing more things like that. Um, obesity, okay, didn't really go down over here, so I think a lot of the policies that were reducing it are more or less fully in effect. There's still some things going on with the junk food tax. So I think it's still going to decay a little bit, but maybe not the speed we want. Hospital overcrowding. We're halfway there. We're halfway there. And respiratory disease did actually stop being maxed out, which is nice. How's the actual, um, in, no, not environmentalists. Well, I guess from here we can go to the environment. Oh, it's the environment. It's not zero. We have some, an environment. Some an environment now exists. Community policing. Is this still a thing in here, actually? Because that was always insanely good. Yeah. Um, unless it's already running. Oh, Backspace brought me out of this instead of removing this. So again, yeah, I don't know if this is searchable over here. Uh, what do we look? If we just look at crime. Community policing is an effect. Ah, we could max it out. It'll cost us zero to raise it, which is interesting. Um, so it increases, it makes liberals happy, reduces crime slightly, reduces racial tension slightly, increases membership in liberalism. Um, I suppose there's no reason not to do this if it is currently free and doesn't really cost anything. But yeah, that was always one of the strongest policies. That free school lunch was always like sick good. Um, do we have a recycling initiative? Nothing is showing up over there. It might be running. Um, okay, where is, where is actually the, the, an environment? Okay, it's blue with clouds and stuff. So I would have expected one of these arrows to go to it. Well, right over here. Hmm. Yeah, we do have a deficit again. Now, we're still lower in debt than when we started, which is good. But yeah, we've got, we've got some policies. It's definitely creeping up there. Hmm. If we can improve productivity, I'm going to help with the uncompetitive environment. But just aiming to increase productivity, like, in and of itself can be risky. Because a lot there's a lot of easy ways to do it. By, like, you know, throwing away work safety laws. It's a good way to raise productivity. Technology tends to be the primary thing. Or technology is actually not bad. Science funding is not very high. It actually may have been something we want to do earlier on. Um, you can spend a lot of money on this, and I know we're currently losing some money, but the it takes a long time to pay off. You can see how many uh, quarters this is, but investing in it does boost technology, increases energy efficiency, which is wonderful, and increases GDP. Also means, so state employees are happy because, you know, there's 
getting paid better. Also increases membership over there. It also helps to combat unemployment, which is kind of nice. Synthetic meat. Huh. And coal. Hmm. 